Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with a ZNL, Compression Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show how to make gain compression and P1DB measurements using a Rodian Schwartz ZNL series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of gain compression measurements and also assumes that you're familiar with power calibration and how to perform a power calibration on the ZNL. Separate presentations are available if you'd like a short introduction or review of any of these topics. Let's start with a brief review of compression measurements. Compression is defined as the point where the output power of a device, most often an amplifier, is n dB less than the expected output power, assuming a constant or linear gain. In most cases, n is 1, and compression is commonly quantified as the 1 dB compression point, or P1 dB. There are several ways of measuring gain compression, but the most important and the most accurate is using a two-port vector network analyzer, or VNA. One port of the VNA sources the device input power, P in, and another port measures the output power, or P out. The results are plotted as gain versus input power, which produces a graph such as the one shown here. The 1 dB compression point, or P1 dB, can then be read or calculated from this plot. Making accurate compression measurements requires accurate values for both P in and P out, and therefore a special type of calibration, called a power calibration, is needed to ensure the accuracy of the sourced and received power. Note that power calibration is different from the more common system error or S-parameter calibration, but these are often used together to improve measurement accuracy. There are two types of power calibration. The first is source calibration, which uses an external RF power sensor, or meter, to verify the accuracy of the source power. The second is receiver calibration, which is used to verify the accuracy of the measured power. We won't cover power calibration in this presentation, so please see the separate presentation on power calibration to learn more about this topic. The basic test setup for compression measurements is very straightforward. The device under test, or DUT, is simply connected between the two ports of the ZNL. If the maximum output power of the ZNL is not sufficient to push the device into compression, an additional preamplifier may be needed between the ZNL output and the DUT input. At the DUT output, an external attenuator, or the ZNL's optional internal step attenuator, may be needed in order to prevent the ZNL from being overloaded or damaged. This is particularly true in the case of DUTs that produce a very high output power. And as mentioned a few moments ago, a power calibration should be performed before making gain compression measurements. In addition to improving measurement results, this calibration can compensate for gain or loss in the signal path, such as that caused by preamplifiers, attenuators, etc. Basic configuration begins by pressing the Sweep Hard key and then choosing Sweep Type Power. Then press the Frequency Hard key and choose Stimulus. The most important parameters to configure are the start and stop powers in dBm. This is the input power to the device under test, and the ZNL will sweep over this power range during the test. The other important parameter is CW frequency, which is the fixed frequency at which this test is performed. The ZNL runs the measurement automatically. Results are shown as a graph of gain versus input power. That is, the x-axis shows input power in dBm, and the y-axis shows gain in dB. The example shown here is a typical gain compression curve, which shows linear gain at lower power levels, followed by a decrease or roll-off of gain as input power is increased. In addition, the ZNL can automatically calculate compression points from this trace. This is done by pressing the Trace Hard key, selecting Trace Statistics, and then enabling the compression point measurement. The default measurement is for 1 dB, but this can be modified by the user. Once enabled, the compression point measurement 
automatically calculates both input and output compression points and displays them on the screen. In the default operating mode, the reference value for the compression point calculation is the first or leftmost point on the trace. In this example, P1dB is being calculated by finding the point at which gain is 1 dB lower than this default reference value. The reference value can, however, also be defined in other ways. For instance, the user can place a marker on any arbitrary point on the trace, and this point will serve as the reference value for the compression point calculations. In this example, a marker has been placed at the point on the trace corresponding to an input power level of minus 30 dBm. The input and output compression points are now calculated using this user-defined point as the reference value. The reference value can also be defined as the mean or average value over a range of input powers. After selecting range as the reference value type, simply enter the start and stop input power values. This user-defined range is then displayed as vertical purple lines, and the mean reference value is displayed along with the calculated input and output compression points. Before we conclude this presentation, recall that the optional internal step attenuators on the ZNL can be used to attenuate the received signal, or wave, at the analyzer port. This sometimes may be needed to protect the instrument from overload or damage, especially when measuring high gain amplifiers. To configure the step attenuators for a given port, press the Bandwidth Average Power hard key, and then select the port to configure. The attenuation values can be manually entered, or the up and down arrows can be used to move stepwise through this range. On the ZNL, attenuation can be configured from 0 to 30 dB in steps of 10 dB. Let's end with a brief summary. Rodian Schwartz ZNL series vector network analyzers can quickly and easily measure gain compression and calculate compression points. This is done by performing a power sweep over a user-defined range on one port and measuring the dot output power on the other port. Using this information, the ZNL automatically generates a gain versus input power curve and calculates the compression point. A special power calibration should be performed before making gain compression measurements because this both increases measurement accuracy and can also be used to take into consideration any gain or loss in the signal path. And finally, optional internal step attenuators are also available for the ZNL, and these can be used to help reduce the risk of distortion or damage when making measurements on devices with high output power levels. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the ZNL Compression Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about compression measurements, other vector network analyzer measurements, or VNAs from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.